Hey guys, today we are going to be canning some roasted beets. You can purchase beets from most grocery stores or of course, if you've grown them yourself, that works as well. We're going to go ahead and harvest our beets from our garden and you'll see that they're a little bit smaller than what you typically would, would want to can. We just wanted to try it out, see what it would be like to can some smaller beets, knowing that it would be some extra work, but we wanted to see how it would turn out because we really enjoy even just buying beets from the store in the can and just eating them straight out of the can. So we thought we would try it in the future, we'll definitely let them grow bigger because it was a lot of extra work to peel the tiny beets versus the larger ones. So lesson learned, but they do look beautiful. So we went ahead and harvested our beets and then we rinsed them. I prefer to rinse them out in the garden just so that I can remove as much dirt as possible before bringing them inside the house. So we've rinsed them once or twice. You wanna lightly scrub around the roots just to try to get any large chunks of dirt off of the beets. And then we brought them inside and started cutting them. And what we're doing is separating the beet greens from the beets. We like to eat the greens, so we've separated them out. We'll wash those thoroughly. And then we're going to blanch them and freeze them because we do have, have quite a bit. And then with the beets, what we want to do is prepare them for, for roasting. So by cutting off the stems, leaving about one to two inches of the stem on there, leaving the roots on there, dropping them into a bowl, we'll just cut all of these and then we'll be ready to roast them. Once you've separated the greens from the beets, you can line out some aluminum foil. We have a pan underneath of this, and we're just going to dump the beets onto the aluminum foil. We can drizzle some olive oil or avocado oil over it, sprinkle some salt on, and then fold up the aluminum foil to make kind of a little packet. And what this does is helps to hold in some of the heat and then some of the steam as well, which will ultimately help us to be able to remove the peels from the beets. A lot of people really prefer the, or just maybe out of habit or what they know, use the boiling method. And that works as well. Both options take about the same amount of time. I find that roasting the beets just helps to preserve a little bit more flavor than boiling them in water and, and pulling some of those flavors out. So we'll go ahead and roast them in the oven at 400 degrees. Cat, shush at 400 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on their size. These are pretty tiny, so we can get away with 20 minutes. And then once they're done baking, you'll want to let them cool in the aluminum foil for at least 10 minutes. So they're just going to kind of stay in there and, and steam, and that helps to loosen up the skins and it also makes them a little bit easier to handle. You could also drop them into an ice bath if you're in a hurry and you want to cool them down quite a bit. When you're ready to start peeling, I prefer to drop the whole aluminum foil packet into the sink and just start from there. You could also set out a cutting board and a knife, but I find that just using the aluminum foil avoids an extra dish to have to clean. And then I use the cat, cat, please. Please stop, you're fine, come here, come here. You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? Look, say hi. Can you say hi? You wanna be nice? Okay, go away. All right, where was I? Potato peeler. Potato peeler to remove the tops and remove the roots from the bottom. After you've removed the top, it makes it a lot easier to just wipe the peel away. And once you've removed the peel, you can drop those into a separate pot and then just continue going through and preparing the rest of the beets. Once you've removed all of the peels, you'll want to do a very thorough rinse to make sure you've removed all of the dirt that may still be on the beets. Now we are ready to can these. So we're going to go ahead and drop 
the beets into each one of our jars. I'm doing pints today. You could also do quarts, whatever makes the most sense for you. I did use my hands because I knew I could rinse them very quickly afterwards, but you could also use some tongs or whatever you need to, to get the beets into the jars. Once we've placed all of the beets in the jars, the next thing we want to do is add in some hot water, leaving about one inch of headspace. I did add too many beets to some of these jars, so I just went back and pulled those out to make sure that I had the correct headspace. After you've put the water in, at this point you can add salt, or even before you put the beets in, you can add salt. I did at one time add in a half a teaspoon of salt to some roasted beets that I was canning, and they were almost inedible. They were incredibly salty. We ended up rinsing them and they just didn't quite taste right. So it's going to be entirely up to you as far as how much salt you want to put in there or if you want to put any salt at all. After that experience, I'm a little terrified to put any salt in there. So I have just sprinkled a little bit in there. That works. And I've also excluded it entirely and that is perfectly fine. So entirely up to you, whatever your preference is. But Take it easy on the salt. Before we put the lids on, we want to make sure we wipe the rims of the jars with some white distilled vinegar. You can use a paper towel and just make sure you remove any food or, or residue that's on top of the jars before we place the lids. Now we'll place the lids. The bands, the bands need to be finger tight and then we're going to get these into the pressure canner. When we're preparing the pressure canner, we want to add about two to three inches of water to the bottom of the pot, about three tablespoons of white distilled vinegar to avoid any of that white residue buildup on the exterior of the jars. If you have a metal lid, so a metal to metal seal, you also want to wipe some olive oil or I have avocado oil. Just wipe that around the rim of the pot to make sure that your lid is going to seal properly. And then we want to place in a rack to protect the jars from the heat in the bottom of the pan. We'll place in our jars. We didn't have quite enough jars to fill the canner and we don't want them to be rattling around in there or falling over and breaking. So I'm just filling a couple extra pints of water and putting on some tattler lids, not even sealing them. I don't, I don't have a seal between the lid and the jar. I just put the lid on, the band, and I'm setting those in there and that will keep everything from moving around and any of the other jars from falling over. Now we're going to place on the lid, make sure that it's level. We'll tighten the wing nuts, each one on opposite sides. And then from there, we're heating up the pot and we want to wait until the steam starts escaping from the vent pipe. Once that happens, we're going to set a 10 minute timer to allow that steam to continuously vent. After that 10 minute timer is up, we're going to drop on our weight. For our altitude, we have 10 pounds, so I've placed our 10 pound weight, and now we just need to listen for the jiggle. After that first jiggle, we can go ahead and set our timer because we are canning pints. This is going to be 30 minutes. If you're canning quarts, it's going to be 35 minutes. The 30 minute timer is up, so we want to go ahead and turn the heat off, but do not remove the weight until the pressure gauge drops to zero. It's been about another 30 minutes and we're down to zero pounds of pressure, so we can go ahead and remove the weight. Make sure all of the steam escapes. Sometimes that takes one to two minutes, so you'll want to wait to make sure the rest of the steam escapes. And then you can go ahead and remove the lid. Make sure that when you remove it, it's facing away from you so you don't burn your face with the steam. And then from there, we can go ahead and remove the jars. And we want these to rest for about 12 to 18 hours. After the jars are cooled, you can go ahead and clean them up. You'll want to label them with whatever it was that you did can along with the date, including the month and year for sure. And then you can remove the bands and store these in a relatively dark place for up to one year. That's it. Canning beets is not incredibly complex. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll see you again soon.